The blood of Jesus cleanses us constantly, the Apostle John says in chapter 1. And not only are we forgiven, cleansed, but he doesn't remember the sins that I've done. When I go before him, I say, oh Lord, I've blown it again. He would say, what you talking about again? I don't remember you blowing it before. Really, Lord? Uh-uh. Your sins and iniquities will I remember no more. That is grand. God truly cannot remember my sins. That's good news. I'm really thrilled about that. It's true. There's a story that came out of the Philippines years ago about a very spiritual, wonderful Christian lady who was in constant communion with the Lord. And she went to her parish priest and kept on saying to him, well, the Lord has spoken to my heart, or the Lord has showed me this, or the Lord has told me that. And this sort of irritated that parish priest. He said, do you really think God speaks to you in that way? I know he does. And the priest said, well, you know, I'm not sure that God works that way in these days. Oh, I know he speaks to me. He answers my questions. I talk to him daily. The priest then said, okay, if that be so, I did something years ago when I was 11. No one else knows about it, but I'm ashamed of it and embarrassed about it. But nobody on the face of the earth knows. So if God really talks to you and answers your questions, you ask him what it was that I did when I was 11. And you come and tell me, and then I'll believe you. Okay, she said. So she went her way. And the next day she came back to the priest. The priest said, well, did you talk to God? Yeah. Did you ask him the question? Yeah. Did you hear from him? Yeah. Ha, huh, you did. Well, what is it that I did, he said to that lady. And that sweet lady looked at him and said, well, I asked God what you did that was so bad when you were 11. And God told me he can't remember. And in that simple story is a grand and great truth. That's exactly the way it is. God cannot remember sin that was done by you and by me. Those of us that have believed in Jesus and have been washed in the blood that was shed on Calvary. He cannot remember. I'm so glad about that. So Allah, the Islamic teachers say, is unknowable. The true and living God has made himself known to you and me through Jesus Christ, his son. Allah can do anything. The true and living God cannot. He cannot lie. He cannot learn. And he cannot remember the sins that we've done. <laughs> I'm thankful about that. Finally, the third thing that is foundational in Islamic thought. Allah, they say, is the unknowable one. Secondly, he's the all-powerful one. And finally, he's the all-knowing one. He knows everything. But you know, that's not so with the true and living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God and Father of our Savior, Yeshua, or Jesus Christ. What do you mean? God, our God, doesn't know everything Four things really quickly. Number one, he does not know a sin he does not hate. He does not know a sin he does not hate. God hates sin. He does not know a single one that he does not hate. The story was in the papers a couple of weeks ago now. A lady that was told by her doctor to go on a strict diet, well, she broke down and one day in the grocery store, she bought a big box of unpopped golden grain extra buttery popcorn. The kind that has that theater taste that's just packed with butter, you see. And she took it home. And she put it in her popper dealy bobber. And she popped it up. True story. And then she began to scoop it up and scarf it down when she halfway through grabbed something that was a little odd 
larger than a popcorn kernel, obviously, but coated with all kinds of sauce and butter, so she bit it, but it didn't bite very well. It wasn't really chewable. Maybe you heard the story. She took it out and washed it off and rushed to the health department, and yes, indeed, it was a human finger. <laughs> Somebody in preparing and packaging the popcorn lost a finger and it got stuck in the box of golden grain doubly buttered popcorn that day. Be sure your sin will find you out, you see. See, sometimes we say, oh, you know, I know I shouldn't do this or go there, but that's okay, hey. I can sort of butter up God and, hey, it's going to be fine. Listen. God does not know a sin he does not hate because he knows, he knows what will happen. There's a finger in the box, you see. There's a finger that is going to be pointing right at you. There's a finger that's going to be sickening to me. God knows that. And as we've said time and again, sin, sin, sin. Sin is not bad because it's forbidden. Sin is forbidden because it's bad. God does not know a sin he does not hate. He knows it'll gross us out. It'll make us sick. There's a finger in the box every time, you see. Secondly, he does not know a sinner he does not love. I like that. God does not know a sinner he does not love. Allah, die infidel, was the cry of Muhammad and his followers. If you don't submit, you die. Jesus, God in the flesh, God among us, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, well, there in Gethsemane, the night before he was crucified, as he was praying in the garden for you and for me. Judas, the worst person who ever lived on the face of the planet, the one who's called the son of perdition or the son of waste, a big waste, Judas betrayed a man that he knew was completely and totally innocent. Judas, he came to the garden, followed by temple soldiers with their shields gleaming and the flames flickering. Judas came to Jesus and kissed him on the cheek. And Jesus looked at Judas and didn't say, die, infidel. Jesus looked at Judas and said, friend, what seekest thou? He called Judas. In the moment of Judas betraying of Jesus, the worst thing that has ever happened in the history of humanity without question. He looked at Judas, and what did God, Jesus, God in the flesh say? Friend, friend, what are you doing? Seeking to give Judas yet another opportunity to think through, to turn back. That's, that's our God. God, he does not know a sin he does not hate, but he does not know a sinner he does not love. And none of you, I don't care who you are, who you might be, none of us are worse than Judas, I guarantee. And God in the flesh, Jesus Christ looked at Judas and said, friend, not infidel, not die, not the cry of Muhammad and his God, the moon God, Allah, you see. The third thing that God does not know, he does not know a sin he does not hate, he does not know a sinner he does not love, he does not know another way to be saved. See, Many religions say, many people think, well, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, Confucianism, Zoroasterism, whatever it might be, hey, all the roads will get you to heaven. So let's just all get along. What do you say? But that's so wrong. God does not know another way to heaven. Jesus said, all others are thieves and robbers. He declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
The book of Acts proclaims there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And Jesus, in the garden of Gethsemane, what did he do? Father, if it be possible,